But how are they doing though? They're all right over there. How you doing? By that helicopter, man. Get that helicopter. <laughs> little rusty though. I saw it. It's a little rusty. Sorry. Right. All right. So congratulations for our inaugural Sunday school. Right? And my wife's pretty good at that, man. She's that lady. And uh, when it comes to the ministries, right? The ministry, many hands make light work, right? Many hands make light work. But she's that. She knows how to train them uh, and teach them. And that's a good deal. We just need your support. Just keep it, keep it going and they'll be fine, right? And we'll, we'll try to do our best to, to pitch in. All right, take your Bibles, if you will, go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Were you two born and raised down here, or you're coming from someplace else? The Yak? <laughs> nice. How many? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Floridian. You're all right. They say, oh, we don't pay state taxes. Yeah, they get other ways to get your money. Don't you worry about it. All right, John chapter 15. We'll continue our, so I would say preaching, but we're actually doing like a study on, on uh, the true vine, Jesus Christ being that true vine. Uh, so let's, uh, Brother Kyle, if you would open us up, sir. Thank you, Lord, for keeping our doors open. We have a church. Help us, Lord, receive the message. Take it out of these doors and do something with it. Thank you for our pastor, Lord. You'll never just say what he's said. We pray, Lord, you come back soon. And it'll be a great day for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, so keep each other in prayer. Uh, man, it's good to be saved, but you're in a fight, right? And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and that's the reality of it. And so one of the ways you can combat all that, whatever that stuff is, is that book, this book, right? So we preach it, teach it, learn it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So there's the reality of that. And Jesus Christ is our Savior. Glory to God for it. We believe that God wrote a book, and the key is to, I don't know, read it, maybe, and believe it. And then once you do that, if that's the script, we talked about that a little in Sunday school, That's the don't, don't go off script. Just stick with the book, right? Learn to trust God. Uh, acknowledge where God's hand has been in and out of your life uh, up to today, right? He likes that kind of stuff. He likes the honor thing. He likes the glory thing. He likes to be praised. That's that's. But I, that's, his, that's him, though. Like, if he put everything together, that would make sense to me, right? Uh, yeah, so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, I imagine he likes songs sung about himself. One of the main ways you could tell that Jesus Christ is completely separate from all the rest of the religious superstars is that you can you can pick out, you could show people there's five, at least 5,000, probably more than that, 5,000 songs written about one fella. And if you were to take all the uh, top religious superstars, like top 10 or whatever, and add them all up, you couldn't find 50 songs. I, you wouldn't even find that, right? All right, John chapter 15, look at verse 1. He says, uh, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, right? That could be painful at times. Uh, that it may bring forth, though, but there's a reason for it, more fruit. Verse 3, now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me... You cannot do a thing, right? You can't do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, as it withereth. Uh, and man gathereth them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7. If ye abide in me, 
and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so ye be my, and so shall ye be my disciples. So, all right, so last week we went over, there's, there's about nine points to this, which is why I went from, oh, that's a pretty easy text. We could just preach that in a service or two. And when I started studying all that, uh, which is what that Bible has. Like if you're reading your Bible and you start understanding like the, the different, uh, what we call it, um, references, right? What we call it, comparing scripture with scripture. You get that a lot with your Bible. And it's an interesting book. So it's the original link, right? So if you ever been on the internet, you click on what they call links. So you read in a particular article and then it's high. There's a word highly. You click on that. You go over here and you click on that. And you go over here. Well, that's, that's what this Bible does. This is what this Bible is. It's the original that, which means that whoever put this together didn't have to wait for Bill Gates or, or Apple technology, amen, to be able to provide you with a source to relate to a creator that you have not a whole lot of anything in common with, right? So what would you possibly have in common with a creator that put the sun in the air, put the moon up the stars, and, and created this earth of ours and with, with all the systems that are associated uh, with how the earth has been created, and then let alone your whole body, like your eye and your ear and your heart and your system, your circulatory, all these different ways that this Bible's been put together. So, like, what would you have in common with a being like that? And that's the cool part about God. God is able to not only be that guy, but he can also get to a point where he can communicate to you, and he be that guy to be able to take care of those things that he knows that you need, and he's going to provide that for you. You just got to, I guess, when we were talking about belief in, in Sunday school, and you just got to be able to believe that he is he. That's him. That's him. That's the guy. You're not waiting for lizards to come out of outer space. We're not waiting. We're not putting satellites up there or trying to call things down from the second heaven or anything. like. I don't want no frog looking thing in my backyard, right? I got enough problems with the ducks, right, coming in our yard and taking my cat food and stuff. I don't need frog like things coming. They'll eat that. They'll eat my dogs and my cats, and I don't want that. So last week we were in John chapter 15 verse 1 So I'll reemphasize that We'll take a look at that And then I'll go on to verse 2 He says I'm the true vine And my father the husband Which means uh, the husbandman rather It's the definition of what a husbandman is That's a farmer and, and a vine dresser right? So we recognize that there, there's an order of things So unlike TV and Hollywood They say that no everything's good and, uh, you know, it's all yin and yang. It's, it's a guy could be a girl, a girl can be a guy type thing. Dogs can be cats, cats can be turtles. And that's not true. That's not how this Bible's put together. There's a beginning and an end of things. There's an order of things. Paul says God's not the author of confusion. And when it comes to Jesus Christ, this is him. See, when you look at verses like this in chapter 15, it's like, I'm the true vine. Why would you call, are you a vine though? Is that you? Like you're a plant? Like that's you? And it's not that. It's that what this guy, this creator being, right, this God, Jesus Christ, he, he, he knows that we're finite. Is that the right word? We're finite. We're simple, simple minded. So he's going to try to get to a point where I can relate to you. And why, wait, the way he does that are these different illustrations that he uses. He'll use parables and different things like that so that you can understand things that are often beyond your understanding, right? And then on top of that, if you're saved, if you trusted Jesus Christ, who do you have physically and literally dwelling inside of you? If that Bible's right, you got the Holy Spirit of God inside of you. But what does he do? He guides you and he directs you, right? And then that's, you know, uh, in the book of Luke, when Jesus Christ is meeting with those disciples there, it was he, Jesus Christ, that opened their understanding to the scripture. So we don't need to rewrite the book. We need to reread the book. That's what the pastor said, right? So when you read this, I'm the true vine. It would be like, well, obviously he's not a vine. That doesn't mean he's a vine, he's not a tree, he's not a, he's not a bush. But what he's doing is giving you an example of how his expectations are. And we went over that. I don't want to rehash a lot of that, but I need to be, remind you that when God first created Adam and Eve, remember back in the garden, he created Adam and Eve well, in a garden, right? That's that. And the more you read that Bible, the more you find the similarities, right, and how God is putting things together. The problem that we have oftentimes comes with, 
well, you know, the old, I'll do it my way, right? You know, what was that, that Dodo Bird's name? Neil? No, not Neil. Uh, Frank Sinatra. You ain't going to do, okay, but you can do things your way, and then you're going to reap, amen, what you sow, doing things. I found over the years since being saved in 1988, uh, I was born and raised here in Dade County in Miami, and I remember them days without Jesus Christ. When I got saved, I trusted Christ when I was 22 years old. Boy, them days, like, it wasn't an immediate thing. There's, like, a vine. It takes time. It takes growth. It takes some some pursuant of whatever to get the level of fruit, get to the level rather than where there's this fruit of the Spirit that starts showing up in Galatians chapter 5 and how my way of thinking started changing. And slowly but surely, I went from what that guy used to be to what this guy is. And then there's the devil. And what's the devil? Devil? I kind of like round up. Right. He just come in there and see what we're doing here in this ministry. And he just starts squirting all sorts of different things on you so that at the end of the day, if he can't get your salvation. Right. He can get everything else because you'd read the book of Job and see what he got. And he'll take your joy from you. He'll take your mind from you. He could take your health from you, take your finances from you and goes on and on and on. See, there's so much more to life than just heaven and hell. Now, that's the most important part. You must be born again, and I'm glad you're saved. Glory to God for it. If you never trusted Christ as your own personal Savior, I think salvation is about <clears throat> as eating as hitting the floor when you fall. It's the, <clears throat> the challenge comes after you get saved. There lies the fight. There's what you fight. Not to be saved. I don't have to fight to be saved, right? Thank God. I don't need to en enlist in some jihad or some crusade and then get involved with all this, taking over somebody's country in the name of Jesus Christ or whatever. That, we don't have to do that. All you got to do is trust Jesus Christ. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So did you do that? He who hath the Son hath life. And he who hath not the Son of God hath not life. It's that simple. Are you saved? Yeah, how'd you get saved? Well, who, how, who did you, who saved you, right? Why did you guess? Those are the questions I think you need to settle. But once that cross is settled, once you acknowledge that there are right divisions in your Bible and understand that you're sealed unto the day of redemption, you got to move past that and start this whole deal, which is why Jesus Christ describes himself as this deal here. Paul says we're vessels. Like, what's a vessel? I don't know. What's a vessel? Like a ship? Well, uh, in the context there, it's like a vase. It's like a planner. Your body's that. So he, he, your body's like the temple, the Bible says, correct? And then you read uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He said, glorify God in your body. See? And it's not, see, it's, your body doesn't go. You know where your body's destined for? The dirt, right? The grave. It's going... But, but the way this thing, at this point, you'll get a new vessel. This is that. In the meantime, you just got to get used to serving God because in eternity, if you read like, oh, I don't know, Revelation chapter 4, do you know what they're talking about up in heaven today? And they're talking about Jesus Christ today up there. But, but what about down here? See, there's the roundup guy. What he wants is that you take your focus off of him. Now, Jesus Christ is that guy to remind you, right? I'm the way, see? Well, they're all sort of, no, they're all, and that's your choice. You better choose wisely, brother, because it's, uh, the eternity is too long to be wrong about stuff, right? And as a Christian, as a saved, born again believer, man, you're saved and born again. Glory to God for it. But you still got a, an eternity to contend with. The question is, what, what, what do you, what becomes of you there? See, you're so, caught up at times and that somebody wants you getting caught up with the here and the now stuff but nobody's talking about tomorrow like, so what what happens a hundred years from now where are you going to what is this uh, is there's no a hundred year for you are there a, is there a hundred year time period in your future i would say it's so much more than that yeah it ain't ending at the at the funeral that i preach for you it ain't that you keep on keeping on the question is if you're saved you go to heaven the second but if you're not saved you go to hell that's just that's just the reality of it so you're under a curse if you're not saved the idea that we would get to the position of where we could tell other people about it therein lies that level of fruitfulness so jesus christ is very specific you say look i'm the vine oh, see my my dad up there father father right he's the husband man and then they get this thing about this whole uh 
they get this thing about this 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 farmer and these shepherds and different things like that, right? So God the Father, he's referred to as the husband. Jesus Christ is that vine, right? And when you read your Bible, it then starts to make sense because there's such a constant theme about this farmer type thing. In the Old Testament, all those Jews, they started off in a garden. They started off in a garden, right? And so that should tell you that is the way God does his business, right? Uh, God is organic. And it wasn't until after Cain fell that you start building these buildings and stuff. And then, of course, he was the one. And we went over that last week when it came to uh, when it came to uh, Cain. Right. And then we talk about that. I right, look at look at Genesis chapter nine. Look at verse 20. And when it comes to that theme of being a husbandman and, and what this kind of organic lifestyle, see, God's organic. He's life, right? And somebody, again, wants you caught up in the opposite. So what's the opposite of life? Death. Death. Things are fake. That's why Hollywood's so popular, isn't it? It's like get involved in things that are temporal. Why would you do that as a Christian? you got so much more to this life. So the idea would be, if you're not careful... The world, the flesh, and the devil, they got you all caught up with the here and the now, right? And and you, you're you not that person. This world is not our home, amen? We have no continuing city here. If you got a pastor that's worth his soul, you're going to keep pointing upwards. We're, we're out of here, man. If you don't, and and it's in, and, and that guy's in there for uh, the business side of things, right? Well, what's he doing? He's preaching the here and now stuff that we got to build a bigger church here. We got to spend money on parking lots and stuff. Now, do you need a parking lot? I, I guess. But who provides the parking lot? Well, if you read the text that we just read in John chapter 15, well, he was that guy. But if you just stay focused and then they'll tell you how to get to that point, And this is where we're at here today in John chapter 14. But I want to show you this husband thing, this this whole the today, like we said last week that we pointed out, them Jews aren't known for being anything like they were when they first started. They're all businessmen. They're all lawyers. They're, they're doctors and stuff. They're judges, right? Uh, maybe politicians. What happened to the husbandry thing? What happened to that position that you started off in the garden? We're now living like vagabonds, right? And fugitives. We went over that last week. It's because when you become disobedient and your walk with Jesus Christ, you're salvation, you're sealed, man. I got all that. But, brother, if you think for a second, because sometimes, you know, you Baptists get accused of this whole, whoa, once saved, always saved type thing. And that means that you have, you're telling those people that you could just live like the devil and get away with it. Your Bible doesn't teach that. I don't teach that. I don't know any of my friends that teach that. I remember one time at that school, some of the kids were talking about uh, eternal security and stuff. And what happens if you do X, Y, and Z after you get saved? And I showed them what the Bible had to say. Well, this kid went home and he explained to his parents what the Bible said about stuff. But what their his parents were doing to him to keep him in line, they held, they held this this wrong perception this kind of fear thing over their son so if you don't do xyz god's not a elf on the shelf man that ain't that guy why do you keep and that's the religious side of things but we're not religious we're saying